Hey guys, today I'm back in Kerbal Space Program and I wanted to try making a rocket using only solid rocket boosters that can land on Duna. During my last video, I had pointed my dart engines directly at fins, which caused them to produce no thrust. Now while I could just send my solid rocket boosters away once I want to stop accelerating, I wanted to try intentionally blocking the nozzles to stop their output. So let's get right into it. So I'm starting now in the sandbox and I want to try getting my system to block these engines working first. So I just built a very simple solid rocket fuel engine here and I just let it launch and it works fine. But now if I try to block the bottom of the engine with a heat shield, I was hoping nothing would happen and that's exactly what's happening here until it explodes because of overheating. Now just out of curiosity, I wanted to flip around the heat shield to see if it'd be more resistant one way or the other, but it seemed to be equal on both sides and it ended up exploding after a set amount of time. So I deleted that one and put in a bigger heat shield. And this time when I tried to launch the engine, you can see the heat shield's heating up, but it's not exploding and the rocket got nowhere. And while normally that's a bad thing, in this case, I'm very happy nothing happened. So the next thing I wanted to work on was a simple system to be able to block the engine, since if I put that in place, it would literally just do nothing. I want to be able to burn the engine and then at some point be able to stop it from producing any thrust. So what I was thinking was just putting in a fuel tank here, which I'll completely drain, and then putting in a fin. Now this fin is going to be able to angle so that it blocks the thrust of the engine, but then I can also angle it back to create more thrust again. So the first test didn't work out so well because the clamping device ended up releasing too early. But you see here, I'm able to angle this back and forth, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to angle it over the engine so it stops producing thrust. And this first test exceeds producing thrust, but when I start blocking it, it still produces thrust. Now I'm not sure if the fins just can't block the output of the engine. I'm inclined to say that's probably not the case, and I probably just didn't set it up right, and that's actually why I'm going for a second test here to see if I can fix that. But even if I did have that block the output of the engine, if the small heat shield couldn't stop all that heat, I have no idea why I expected this fin to be able to do it. But I still wanted to try this out because it's a really easy way to get this to work, if I can. So I stacked two of these fins on top of each other and I was hoping they'd snake with each other so I'd be able to sort of angle this and snake it over the output of the engine, but they didn't snake at all, they just did that. So what I decided to do was kind of disassemble my engine a little bit and put on a stack bicoupler and put on my engine on that. But on the other side of the bicoupler, I actually put a liquid fuel tank. Now I'm gonna be completely draining it, of course, since I can't use that fuel at all. But what I'm hoping to do is have that tank, or actually one that's attached beneath it, detach and then slide into place so it gets stuck underneath the engine and stops any thrust from being produced. So I put in a docking port underneath the solid fuel engine, and I'm gonna put one on this other tank I just talked about. So I put in a bicoupler, one of the small heat shields, which I actually said didn't work before, but the reason I'm just putting it in is because it's small and it fits in this place that I'm designing it for. Eventually I'll end up opening it up though and put in the bigger shield. So I figured that I put a docking port on the liquid fuel tank that's gonna be able to slide and attach to the other one to get stuck underneath the engine. And finally I'm just building up a massive wall of fuel tanks. Now again, these are all gonna be drained because I can't even use this fuel, but I'm literally just using them as a wall right now to be able to guide this tank so that it can only get stuck underneath the engine and it can't fly out of the rocket. Now I also put a liquid fuel tank underneath the engine and this one's actually gonna cause some problems. I need it temporarily to be able to slide my tank into place and you see here in this test it ends up heating up because it's underneath the engine. So that's a problem I'm definitely gonna need to fix in the future. To get the tank to slide into position, what I needed was some sort of thrust, and for that there's a few options I could use for solid fuel boosters, but temporarily I just wanted to use these monopropellant boosters because I can adjust how much thrust they're outputting, which is just convenient during testing. So after I got those rockets in place, now you can see as I turn them on, they sort of push their way out and it ended up turning a little bit. It still got in the way of the engine, it made it stop producing thrust, but it also fell down and now the liquid fuel tank was starting to explode, so that caused some issues. So what I did is just slightly redesigned how I'm using the fuel tanks to hold in this liquid fuel tank, and basically I'm just going for this like C shape instead. So the tank gets completely surrounded as soon as it starts to go forwards, and you can see here it ends up guiding right into place underneath that engine. And after it settles for a little bit, you can see it even ends up docking with the docking port and gets stuck underneath the engine. And as I turn it on here, you can see it works, but it ends up exploding. But that's totally to be expected, because the heat shield I was using, I knew wasn't going to be able to sustain that heat. So I'm going to need to come up with some way to be able to put in the bigger heat shield, and for that I wanted to remove the walls of fuel tanks I had, and instead what I wanted to do is create this rail system. Now this fixes the problem of having a fuel tank underneath the engine, since I'll just have a rail system, and it'll ride on the rails instead of this fuel tank underneath it. And after I built up those basic rails, I also decided to switch out the monopropellant tanks for these small solid rocket fuel ones. Now I think these are normally designed so that once you separate something from your rocket, it'll push it far away and you won't have to deal with it running into your rocket or something like that, but I actually just like using them for pushing this tank in place and it seems to work pretty well. So at this time I also decided to switch out the small heat shield for the big ones since I ended up clearing enough room now that was possible, and it looked like it was partially in the way of the engine, but when I tried launching it here you can see it ended up working, so I guess it was fine. 
And here when I turned on the engine, and then decoupled the heat shield and then sent it in place, so you can see it stopped producing any thrust. So really that was pretty good, and the next thing I wanted to work on was making this symmetrical, since right now it is horribly balanced. So to do that, I just had to basically mess with my rail system a little bit to get it to extend evenly on both sides. And after I got that, I actually deleted the docking ports because they were totally unnecessary. The solid rocket fuel boosters I had pushing the heat shield in place were just strong enough, and once the engine started pushing down on the heat shield, I ended up pinning it in place, so that ended up just being fine. So what I did is just partially disassembled what I had. I put the centerpiece with the rails on the center of the rocket, and then finally, I'm using these squares once again to be able to attach two sets of these heat shields and engines to even out the power. And after I set everything up, you can see I give it a quick test launch here, and it stays perfectly balanced, which is amazing. And once I turn on those side solid rocket fuel boosters, it blocks the output of the engine. And I don't know why so much is exploding, because I didn't see any actual problems occurring, but it ended up working, so that's pretty good. So the next couple things I added were a stability module, and after I got that, I also added in a liquid fuel tank. Now this is going to be for the final stage of the rocket. I'm going to be completely draining these tanks, just like I've said before, since I literally have no use for the fuel inside of them. But it's going to be a good base to put a bunch of solid rocket fuel boosters on. Now I also changed out those flea engines that I had before, which are really small, for these, I think they're called thumper engines or something. And they just have a lot more fuel in them. I think they produce the same amount of thrust, I could be wrong though. And it's just going to give a lot more power to that second to last stage. And it works the same way as before, I can deploy the heat shields, and the rocket begins to fall since it's producing no thrust anymore. Now what I did is added in two of these smaller engines, and these are going to be for the final stage. I'm hoping to use these to circularize my orbit around Duna, and then I can use a bunch of even smaller engines, which I'm going to put in a second. So I'm also putting in some landing gear like this. It's a little harder to do than normal since the angle snap didn't quite want to cooperate with me, so I had to manually space them out, but I got that here. And now I'm putting in those smaller engines. Now these small engines are the same ones I used before to push those heat shields into place, and I wasn't sure exactly how much thrust they were going to produce, and it wouldn't even really show me in the sidebar, but but I was hoping since I had very little weight to move around that they'd still have a good amount of delta V and I'd be able to use them to find control my orbit. So after I put those in place, I also put some nose cones on the rocket to just make it slightly more aerodynamic. And finally put on these massive Clydesdale solid rocket fuel boosters. Now these are the biggest ones in the game and I'm using them for my first stage to get out of the atmosphere. And once I got those, I also decided to put in some fins to make it aerodynamic. And I'm just basing those out on stages one and two since those are the ones that are gonna be in the atmosphere. I also added another stability module. This was a mistake. I added it to the top part of the rocket instead of somewhere in the middle. So I had to carry all that extra weight for no reason all the way to Duna. So that was definitely a mistake I made. And then finally I replaced the fins at the bottom of the rocket with these space fins, which have controls in the bottom of them, so I'll be able to steer the rocket in the air and just make it a little more controllable overall. So I decided to just give it a quick test flight to see how close I could get to really getting out of the atmosphere. So my Clydesdale rockets got me really high up actually, it was pretty good. And after that, I ended up sending them away and went to stage two. Now this was the stage that has the heat shields that ended up getting in front of the rockets. And you can see here that system does end up working even when I'm out in space. So that's actually pretty good. But my rocket ended up just kind of turning wherever it wanted to and it's because I totally ran out of battery power. So I had to slap on a couple battery packs. I probably could have gotten away with one. I actually don't know why I put in two here. That's probably another mistake I made. But I put in a couple solar panels as well to charge up those batteries. And I'm slotting in another stage in between those big Clydesdale rockets and my tiny rocket on top. Now these are just a couple of thumper rockets, the same ones I used for the stage of the heat shields. And the goal of these rockets isn't to escape Kerbin, it's just to get me a little bit closer so that once I have the stage of the heat shields, I'll be able to escape Kerbin, and then I'll be able to deploy the heat shields as soon as I get an encounter with Duna. So just to give him a quick test here, I just did a quick launch again, got up in the air, started turning, and once I ran out of fuel, I got into stage two. And this time my rocket was a lot more stable as well, because of the extra battery packs I added in, and I'm running on that extra stage that I just kind of slotted in. So that got me pretty far, and after that burned out, I went to the stage that has the heat shields, but it didn't quite get me an escape, I was close though. So what I did is just added in a couple more solid rocket fuel boosters onto the Clydesdale, and these are actually going to be for the initial stage as well, just to give me a bit more thrust, and I need these because I'm replacing those small thumper engines with some larger kickback ones, you can see those here. Now I'm hoping that this rocket is going to be able to get me pretty much all the way to Duna. I wasn't too sure about the top stage, because remember, those small rockets that are meant for separating stages apart from each other, it would not show me how powerful they were, so I was just sort of hoping they were going to be strong enough, but I got up into the atmosphere here, and once I ended up running out of my first stage, I waited a second just for my rocket to sort of stabilize a bit, and then I started burning into the second stage. Now this is the one with those new kickback engines, and this one I'm just hoping to extend my orbit at this point. So I took the opportunity to also set Duna as my target so that I didn't forget later, and I got my apoapsis to about a million meters before I started burning again. Now this is the stage the solid rocket fuel boosters, and you can see my orbit is about to escape Kerman. And here it does, and what I'm hoping to do is trigger the heat shields just as soon as I get an encounter so that I'll be able to stop the engine, and I did that here. So there's my periapsis. 
basically at this point, there's nothing to do but just wait till I get there. So I just sort of worked my way away from Kerbin and waited for my encounter. And as I got closer, I was starting to look for Duna in the sky. I couldn't quite find it though. And I ended up warping just a little bit closer and eventually I did see it. So after that, I pretty much just waited until my encounter. And after I got to the encounter, I just waited till the periopsis so that I could start burning to circularize my orbit. So I got there and now I'm pointing retrograde, which is the opposite direction I'm traveling. And I launched that final stage. Now it's kind of comically small compared to the rest of the rocket. And immediately I was a little bit worried because I realized I may not have enough fuel to do it. But I just had to keep waiting and sort of hope that I was enough fuel. I started launching those really small rockets as well to hopefully circularize my orbit faster, but it took literally all of the rockets I had to get a circular orbit, and unfortunately, that was everything I had. I really had no way of getting any closer. So this attempt ended up just sort of being a failure. So there's just a couple changes I had to make. One of them was changing those smaller rocket boosters I had on top for just a longer variant. I think they were called like the shrimp and something else, I forget. And I also put parachutes on top of them because I figured if I'm getting in the atmosphere, the way things were going with how little fuel I had, I was probably gonna slam into it. So I launched here and I sort of just did exactly what we did before. Detach the first stage, detach the second stage, expanded my orbit until I got an encounter, and once I got an encounter, I just warped there, and I was on top of Duna. Now I'd already used my small booster at this point, and I did get a circular orbit, so I was doing better than before, but not by much. Unfortunately, I still didn't have enough fuel for the most part, and here, while my orbit was much closer than before, I still could not get into the atmosphere. So unfortunately this attempt was dead too. So I decided to add a couple more of these tiny boosters just to give me a bit more power once I get to Duna. I was hoping to keep a few of them for when I get into the atmosphere so that I'd be able to burn and, you know, not explode. So I ended up basically doubling the amount I had. Now I'm not sure if I should have done this or if I should have added another one of these big rocket fuel boosters, but that's just what I did. So I added in five more pairs of them and I had the time warp to get my time set to the right time. After I did that, it's time to launch. So, just like before, I ended up just launching my rocket, just like that. Bill's looking happy as ever. At about 6,000 meters, I decided to start turning. Now, normally I don't care so much about doing things as efficiently as possible, but this time I at least have to pretend to be a little bit efficient because I don't have a ton of fuel. And based off the last two attempts, I definitely needed to conserve that. So, I ended up expending my first stage, waited for my rocket to stabilize a little bit, and then launched the second stage. And after I did that, I was hoping the second stage would get me to about a million meters for my apoapsis, and it was like about that. And I started launching my third stage, the one with the heat shields. So you can see it expanding, and finally I escaped Kerbin. Now at this point, I sort of just have to wait until I get an encounter with Duna. Now this time the encounter was not as clean as the last two, and I ended up just barely getting it. So I just waited for my orbit to expand a little bit, and then finally, at just the right time, I had to hit the next stage button so I'd be able to stop the solid rocket fuel boosters from expanding the orbit anymore. And if you want to see what that looks like, that's just like this. And you can see my speed ends up declining. So with that, once again, just for time to wait. So I'd had to warp away from Kerbin and get closer to Duna. And then here finally, I ended up getting my encounter. So I had to go to the periapsis so that I'd be at my lowest point. Now this time I'm much further away than I was before, which I was a little worried about because I knew it was going to take more fuel to do but I was hoping I had enough of those small boosters that I'd be able to handle it. So I ended up burning like this, and now my bigger boosters ended up going for a much longer period of time. And here, they ended up completely running dry, and I didn't have a circular orbit, but I had so many of these small boosters that it ended up just not mattering, and launching two of them ended up getting me really close to Duna. So I just time warped myself to the periapsis, and I faced retrograde again to kill a bunch of my speed, and it started burning. And after that, I just sort of launched a bunch of these boosters, and I got my orbit, fairly circular, went around to the apoapsis again, and started killing much more of my speed. Now this time I'm hoping to hit the surface, and here you can see I will, it just wraps around to touch the surface. So I left one pair of boosters to be able to get into the atmosphere, so I was a little worried this wasn't going to happen. So I expanded all of my landing gear to hopefully create as much drag as possible and enter the atmosphere, and I just sort of went for it. So I time warped, and here I entered the atmosphere. Now I'm hitting the atmosphere at about like 1.2 kilometers per second, which is pretty fast. So I told my parachutes to deploy as soon as they possibly could, and I basically had nothing left to do but just hope it would work out. And here you can see the drag lines beginning to form, and I was really hoping that I'd be able to stay stable and just manage my speed during this descent. Now as I got to about 17,000 meters, I decided to burn my last rocket fuel just to limit my speed a bit more. I, maybe I should have waited later, I'm not entirely sure. You can also see I'm displaying the speed and the altimeter just to make it a bit easier for you guys to see that. 
and now I was getting very worried. So my parachutes weren't going to deploy until 5,000 meters, and until I was going under like about 400 meters per second. So I was really hoping the atmosphere was going to slow me down enough to make this work. And the other thing to remember is the ground isn't at 0 meters, it's at 2,000 meters since that's based off sea level. So I was really hoping that I'd be able to do this before I end up slamming into the ground. Now here my speed is getting lower and lower, and I got under that 5,000 meter threshold, but it just wasn't slow enough to get the parachutes to deploy. So it was sinking further and further, the ground was starting to load in even more detail, and as they got closer and closer, finally here the parachutes deployed, but only two of three of them, because I forgot to deploy the last one. And here I got close to the ground and ended up hitting it at 200 meters per second. I slowed myself down enough to about 100 after the impact, and it was just enough that the parachutes could make it up, and I stopped. Could I have redone that? Could that have been less sketchy? Sure. Was that funny? At least to me, yeah. Now, Jeb ended up being stuck in here because it accidentally landed with the crew capsule pointed down, but fortunately I put a solar panel in the way, so I was able to expand that, lift up the front of my rocket, and have Bill be able to get out. Did I call him Jeb before? Maybe I did. Sorry, Bill. And of course, gotta have him plant the flag. What else would you do? And I technically did it. So guys, thanks for watching. I'm not claiming to be the first person to do a solid rocket fuel challenge. I'm not claiming to have done it in the best way. I just wanted to try intentionally limiting the thrust of the engines with the heat shields, and I'm glad I ended up getting it to work in a final design. So if you have any more credible challenges you want to do, just let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this content, and otherwise, until next time.